Well, hello dear viewer. Um, today's video is a dual channel video. Um, I'm guessing most of the people watching this are on my Mystery Models channel. Um, what you most probably don't know is I've actually just started a second channel. Um, you'll see that um, you know, over the years, occasionally I'll go and visit places that I, I, I think are interesting. And what I've basically done is I've set up a, a channel which is devoted to visiting places that have an association with a myth or a legend, a superstition, ghosts, folklore, whatever, you know, um, and have a dedicated channel rather than putting them on here. So if that's your thing, um, you know, uh, please drop by. Um, there will be a, uh, a link to it um, down below here. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm putting it out on this channel and I'll be putting it out on my other channel. Right. So preamble out the way. The reason that I'm doing this is down to my Effectively Speaking podcast. Now, a while back, I did a, um, a podcast on a 1971 horror film called The Gollum. No, no. sorry. <laughs> it's, the sun's only just come up. It's quite early in the morning. Um, it, it, it's called It, right? Which was a, a loose remake of The Gollum uh, from 1971 with Roddy McDowell. And I watched it once on the BBC many, many years ago. And uh, I wanted to do a feature on it, all right? And uh, trouble is, in this country... You can't get it, all right? So I, I, I bought um, from America, I bought it on DVD, right? There it is, It, Roddy McDowell, all right? Um, and as you can see, it's a, a, a double bill, right? It's a double bill with a film called The Shuttered Room, which I'd never heard of before, right? If I turn it over, there's a still from it, right? Uh, let, let me go down. Da, da, da. Um, da, 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 da. yeah, here we go. Don't go there. Dunwich Islanders say above all, don't enter the shuttered room. Gig Young and Carol Lindley eager to explore the long vacant New, e New England mill house they inherited. Disregard the warnings of the creepy locals, and that plunges them into the mystery and madness of a shocker based on a story co written by H.B. Lovecraft and August. Derlith, all right. Never heard of it before. I'm a big, big HP Lovecraft fan. So uh, what do I do? Go straight onto IMDb to learn more about it. And one of the facts that I learned about it was even though it's um, you know uh, based on an HP Lovecraft story, well, it's not. It's it, it, it's a brief uh, outline that he had written, um, and then he died in oh, August. Um, steps in and he wrote it okay um even though it is you know a Dun dunnage horror story it is set completely um in that uh location that lovecroft's stories are uh, set in uh it was actually filmed here in england here in kent and about a 30 minute drive away from me um so that's what i'm doing i'm in my car i'm gonna spend about half an hour going up there and uh, yeah, I, I, I will uh, do the next bit when I get there, if I can get there. It seems to be quite a uh, out of the way place. So uh, let's see how I get on. All right, so I got here, although that was an outrageously potholed lane I've had to come down. Um, in the film, you've got... Uh, uh, the uh, two leading characters being chased down that road by Oliver Reed in his truck. And uh, <laughs> the cars would shake apart if they tried doing that now. Um, so here I am. Um, and where I am, this is Faversham, which is um, North Kent. We're in the Medway Thames estuaries just here. And all over there, this is called the Ore Marshes. All right. Um, and I was just very surprised that they filmed a H.P. Lovecraft um, sourced. Well, it's not a horror. Um, it's a, it's it's a thriller, really. Um, yeah, it's it's more like the Straw Dogs 
than a, than a horror film. But I'm just very surprised that what they filmed it in Faversham because Faversham to me, it's got a very pretty um, uh, medieval town. But there's nothing of interest. There's no reason for me to go there. They, they've got a tiny little, quite charming independent cinema, but there's no reason for me to go to Faversham. Um, there was in the 90s, in the late 90s, there was actually a shop that sold laser discs. That's the only reason I came here. Um, so, uh, the reason I'm here is, as I say, based on a short story by August, De August Derleth, did I say that right? Um, based on a, an outline by H.P. Lovecraft called the, the shuttered room and in the story um there's a guy called abner white watley uh, from dunnage uh, his grandfather leave, leaves him an old mill all right i'm panning around there for a reason um which i'll explain in a minute an old mill um on the Miska miskatonic river all right but he also in a letter says destroy the mill and anything you find oh moon's up there destroy the moon uh, destroy the moon <laughs> it's, i didn't have much sleep you can tell now destroy the mill and anything he finds in it no matter how small all right um and the guy goes to the mill he uh he explores it he finds a shuttered room where his aunt was locked up she uh she had paid a visit visit to Innsmouth, Innsmouth is it? Or Innsmouth? Anyway, the place in a lot of the Lovecroft books. And uh, yeah, went mad and she was locked up in there. And uh, in, in the story he finds, um, uh, he's, first of all, he, he spots a long-legged frog or toad, he's not quite sure which, and then finds tracks going to the window of the shuttered room. Um, small tracks going in, larger tracks coming out. And anyway, there's lots of reference to other H.P. Lovecraft stories in it. And in the end, wouldn't you know it, there's, uh, he goes into the shuttered room and finds a monstrous leathery skinned creature that was neither frog nor man. Um, very H.P. Lovecraft style creature. All right. So that's the book. The film, as I say, shuttered room. Um, it's kind of similar uh, Susanna Waitley, she, uh, she inherits the, the mill after her parents die. She comes along from New York with her husband. Uh, they come here. It's actually here. Um, they arrive. You see in the film, this is the Shipwright's Arms pub, okay? And over there is the boatyard. You can see there's a bit of a boat there. And you can hear there's a lot of work going on in there. And there's an awful lot takes place in there and around there. Um, I'm not going to go and film down there because, you know, there's people and I'll get looks. All right. Um, and, yeah, there is no, there is no horror to it. Um, spoiler. She's got a long lost sister uh, who is mad, who is kept locked up in the shuttered room. And her aunt Agatha... Um, um, has invented the story of the curse of the Watley family to keep people away from the mill. And that kid is still up there in, in the shuttered room. All right. So that's that. Um, Aunt Agatha lived, and I can't find it. I've been Google imaging it. She lived in this like turreted lighthouse and I can't see any sign of it. It, it must have been around here somewhere, but I can't, I can't see it. The reason I think they, they filmed here, of all places, was they were gi given permission to burn down the mill. There was a mill here, and that's why I think it must have been over there somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was going to be demolished anyway, and uh, they uh, were allowed to use it, and uh, as long as they destroyed it at the end, and that's the best bit of the film, because you can see for real, this really, really hundreds of years, years old mill is burnt to the ground. Quite spectacular, all right? Um, so, yeah, there's a H.P. Lovecraft connection to somewhere up the road from me. Um, but then there's also something else, and this is why I'm, I'm here for my, my, my secondary channel. Um, this place, the Shipwright's Arms, um, it's a pub. It's over 300 years old, but it seems that there was a building on the site uh, before that, going back to like the 13th century. Um, 
It was first licensed in 1738, and uh, it used to serve the, the sailors, the merchantmen that came up the river. I mean, we're at very low tide right now. Um, but yeah, this, was, th this area was rife with, uh, with smugglers and pirates. Um, real uh, place of scum and villainy in its time, I guess. Um, and uh, that, that, that there is a story of a ghost here. Um, it, it seems that in the 19th century, um, a Dutch ship was here, sank. The captain managed to uh, jump off, scrambled across the mud flats to the pub. Some accounts say that he had a, uh, a, a religious icon, an, an iron religious icon, banged on the door demanding to be let in because this is late at night. But the landlord thought, you know, uh, uh, there was villainy afoot, uh, ignored him, and uh, uh, in the morning opened the front door and there the captain was uh, dead. Um, and apparently his ghost uh, uh, comes to visit. Um, people have said, you know, in the pub, temperatures can, uh, can uh, drop dramatically. There's, uh, you'll get a smell of rum or tobacco, and uh, people have said they've seen him. They've seen this salty old sea dog uh, with glowing red eyes. Um, so, yeah, that is why I'm here. I think I'm, I'm going to finish this. I'm going, I'm, as I say, I'm a rather self-conscious. That's why I'm tucked over in the corner here. Um, I, I think I'll do my walk back to my car while filming, and I'll show you the boatyard, all right? And, and, and then you'll get an idea of it. All right, so off we go. Actually, I'm going to pause this and start it when I'm around the corner. So I thought I'd finish by um, just showing you some compare and contrast photos. So this is my route, the pot, the pothole route down towards the boatyards. And here it is, opposite view, but here comes our main characters coming down uh, towards it. All those fields off to the right there, they're all houses now, all long gone. That's Oliver Reed and his goons uh, going down the road. That's the boatyard in the distance. That road is a lot better condition than it was when I went down it yesterday. That's my shot of the pub just before I, uh, before I left. And nice aerial shot. Uh, that's the boatyard. That's the pub top left. And where I was standing is just behind it there. You can see the river was a bit fuller there. Uh, that's Oliver and his mates screeching to a halt. You can see the pub's been disguised, so it doesn't look like a pub. Okay. And yeah, just beyond that tree on the left, that's where I was waffling away. Uh, yeah, that's the car park where I parked. Not so much potholes as bloody great Battle of the Somme craters that I had to navigate around. And yeah, that's where I was parked, where all that junk is and those tyres and that grassy knoll. Um, that's it. And that's the road, the, the entrance road off to the right there. That's Aunt Agatha's turreted lighthouse. I've looked and looked on Google Maps. I, I can't find it anywhere. I don't know if you, you know. Can you let me know if you, if you know where the heck that was? Beautiful shot of the barn. Um, soon to be uh, destroyed and gutted. And there it is being gutted. It's at the side of, a road, of the road. I, I hadn't noticed. Maybe I actually did drive past the location on the way down to the boatyard. Uh, inhabitant of the shuttered room film version and finally inhabitant of the shuttered room book version um, I know what I prefer all right that's it that's me done see you next time